All right, so for your one point perspective project, I want you to really closely look at some of the photos that we went over today in class. I'll post those on CTLS, just some examples of how you would use one point perspective. It is super important that you know and understand the rules because it not only helps you draw architectural things and um, spaces, but it will also help you with just everyday objects. And I'm gonna show you how that will work too because that's your sketchbook assignment for this week as well. So for today, I want you to try out some different one point perspective basic concepts and then we will talk about what what you can do what your choices are for your project okay so the first thing that you need to understand is when you are doing one point perspective there's a reason it's called one point there is one vanishing point if you were doing two point or three point like we saw in that explanation video you're looking at things from different angles. If you're looking at something straight on, that's one point perspective. Any photograph that you see that is looking directly down a street or right at a building or an object and you're facing it, you know, straight ahead, you could find a vanishing point for that. You need to mark where the vanishing point is when you're doing a one point perspective drawing. So many times people will say, oh yeah, I'm doing that in one point. And if you ask them where the point is, they don't know. If you don't know where the point is, all of the lines in your drawing are gonna be a little bit off, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do to practice this is you're gonna take your drawing, or you're gonna take a piece of paper. This can be in your sketchbook. And I want you to draw a horizon line. Just use your ruler, draw a horizon line, and pick a vanishing point, okay? Mark it. Then I want you to take these, I want you to draw six rectangles or six squares. And I want you to take the corner of them and you're gonna take the corner and line it up with the vanishing point. You can go all the way back to the point if you want to, if that will help you, okay? And I want you just to see and to practice how that brings that into what makes sense, okay? So you're gonna take the corner of this, you're gonna slide it down, you're gonna take the corner of this, go to all the way to the vanishing point. Now one of the rules in one point perspective is anything that's vertical in real life is gonna stay vertical in your drawing, okay? So if I were to make this into a box, or theoretically I guess it could be a building or you know a piece of furniture or whatever it is you're drawing, Anything that's vertical in real life stays vertical in my picture. And that's really important because you will see drawings all the time where people kind of understand the rules of perspective, but not quite. And their vertical lines are tilted and it makes the whole drawing look off. So as I get up here closer to the vanishing point, of course, what we can see from this box changes. I don't see anything from over here because if I did, it would be inside of that space, okay? So I'm not even gonna worry about that. All right, so up here, this will also help you too as you place things in a composition. If you want to be able to see more of this side, you're probably not gonna put it so close to the vanishing point. So it just kinda depends on what you are drawing. But this is just good practice to see where things would be in the composition and how they might look, which parts we could see. If I wanted to box this one off, remember my vertical lines stay vertical. Your horizontal line will go across this way. And anything at an angle has to line up with that. Okay, I'm gonna do this last one right down here. I'm not gonna go through the one I already drew. I'm just gonna go up to it. And that's a good example of how some boxes would appear in one point perspective. Now, you have some choices. Do this on one page in your sketchbook, okay? You can make some little notes about perspective. You could write the rules of perspective on there. And I will give you those rules. I think you also have a handout on it, but I will post, post it if you don't, okay? So that's one page of your perspective project. The second page, you have some choices to make probably in middle school or even in elementary school, you did a basic one point perspective drawing 
where you're drawing a room. And if you want to repeat that and kind of perfect it, you're welcome to do that. That's one of your options. So if you're doing that, you're gonna draw a rectangle or a square. That's the back wall of your room. You're gonna put, pick your vanishing point and mark it. You're gonna line the corner of your room up with the vanishing point. It has nothing to do with the corner of your paper. It is the corner of that picture plane back here, this surface. And I'm gonna extend these out just like that. So now I basically have a room. You can design it into any type of room that you want. It can be your bedroom at home. It could be a store. It could be a school. It could be a grocery store. It could have shelving all along the walls. It's totally up to you. It could be um, an art museum. It could be anything. So if you're putting something on the wall over here, anything that's vertical, is going to stay vertical. Everything else is going to line up to the vanishing point. So I can either make that into a window, I could make it into something hanging on the wall, right? I could do it again, or maybe I'm going to do a door. Keep in mind how high things are and where they would be in relationship to a ceiling. Okay, I'll show you one in just a second that would be incorrect. Um, let's say that this maybe is like a library and I want some bookshelves over here. I'm going to erase this because I'm not going to be able to see that part of the wall because this shelf is going to come in front of it. I'm not going to make it a very big shelf. Vertical lines are going to stay vertical. The top edge is going to come down to here. This is going to go all the way back. This is the same picture plane as this because this is facing me. So it's going to come straight back, straight up, and straight across. It doesn't go back in the distance. It's right here with me. All right. Then I'm going to put some shelves in. Every shelf that I make is going to line up to the vanishing point. And it may seem a little off depending on where you drew the vanishing point and where your shelf ended up, but if you follow the rules, it will end up looking correct. This one, I can see the bottom of the shelf, not the top, okay? So then I've got my shelves in there. If I wanna go ahead and put books on the shelf, the vertical lines are gonna stay vertical, but those lines are gonna line up to the vanishing point. in the book I can and I would just keep on going put some titles on them and that's up to you if I wanted to put let's say tiles on the floor all of the floor is going to go to the vanishing point now if you decide to do a room just a simple room. You need to have some things in it, okay? You either need to have some furniture in it, some doorways, some things on the wall. Don't just do a basic room, okay? Do something that's gonna be a little extra as far as what you're putting in there. And you could, cause you're gonna color these or watercolor these or color pencil these or add color somehow to these. So you could do a checkerboard floor if you wanted to. You could, um, you could design furniture sitting on the floor. You could have something hanging from the ceiling. It is totally up to you as the artist, once you know these rules, to use them how you want to use them. So I'm gonna put some, these could be skylights up here. I'm gonna make them have some depth to them. I'm gonna get them sketched out first. 
And in drawing and painting right now, we're doing two point perspective. And we've been talking a lot about how just because you're doing a drawing in perspective does not mean it has to look like a robot drew it. It could be very painterly. You could, you know, make it very sketchy or watercolor it or, you know, you have to develop your own style with how you're going to finish it. As long as you follow the rules, it's going to look good mechanically and then it's up to you to decide how you're going to pull it off and make it a finished product. All right, so that's one option for your second page in your sketchbook. Your other option is you could do, and I'll put a photo of this on CTLS as well, but you could do a view of a city as if you were laying on the ground looking up at the buildings all around you. And I started that one here, but the way you basically do it is you're still going to have a horizon line. You're still going to have one vanishing point because we're still doing one point perspective. And then you are going to connect all of the edges of your building to that one vanishing point. I'm going to go this way actually. And then the vertical lines in your real life are going to stay vertical in your drawing. And you can just continue all the way around. I started this one here. You're going to continue all the way around designing the windows, designing the tops of the buildings, making sure that everything lines up how you want it. And you can see up here, vertical lines on these windows up here are going to stay vertical and then these lines would connect to your vanishing point okay so if you want to do a city scape like that you could if you wanted to do a city as if you were at the very top flying over the city looking down you could do it like this one right so all of these windows would line up to this vanishing point and you could do your cityscape like that so your job is on one page of your sketchbook you're going to do this practice with the six rectangles or squares and you're going to write some perspective notes and I'll put on the assignment what what you would need to include in that. Then for page two you're going to decide if you're doing a space inside a room where you've added furniture and other things going back in the distance or you can do an outside city scene. Alright so then if you're wondering okay what if I don't want you know how is one point perspective going to help me just with regular everyday objects and that's where your sketch assignment comes in this week you are going to be drawing a piece of furniture it could be any type of furniture you want it could be a sofa a chair a bed whatever the case may be and you're going to draw it in per perspective in correct perspective if you think about any object whether it's a car or a coffee mug or whatever if you were to draw it out into a little box and I've got these boxes darker than you're gonna want yours I started my sketch but you're drawing a piece of furniture if you're drawing it in correct perspective and you place it in a box first it makes it really easy to kind of divide out that box and to start to figure out where things are located, how that would fit into a regular object. So vertical lines on this sofa are going to stay vertical. Horizontal lines are going to stay to the vanishing point, right? And you could section that out. You can add little pillows and other etc. 
accessories. So you basically just have to know the rules of perspective. And then your job as an artist is to turn it into your own style. All right, so on this one, if I wanted just a simple chair, I could still box it off knowing which way my lines needed to go. And y'all, if you're putting furniture in a room, it doesn't have to go to that same vanishing point. It's got its own vanishing point, right? So you can kind of, you could put a chair going the opposite direction of looking, you know, straight on you. So they may, it may not be using the same vanishing point that your room is using. So keep that in mind. Everything doesn't, you know, everything in a room doesn't stay stationary. It's not always going to be facing the same direction. But once you get the basic understanding of that chair done, then you can decide, all right, well, I want it to have arms or I want this part to have, you know, a cushion or whatever the case may be, or I want it to have fancier legs or however you want to do it. But all of those things could start with a box. Same thing for our just like we talked about, a car, a refrigerator, I mean, anything that you want to draw, if you're drawing it in per correct perspective, it will help you. Now, let me show you really quickly some ways that you could mess up. And I'll do it with this dark so you can see. Number one, use your ruler to start with, because if you don't, you're gonna think your lines are straight, but they're not going to be. This, the big mistake that some people make is they make this connect to the corner of their paper instead of the corner of their room, the corner of their wall. And if you do that, your picture plane or your wall is already down into the ground in, in a weird way. So make sure you are doing vanishing point, corner of the picture plane or corner of the wall back there. And then I see a lot of times people forget that vertical lines have to stay vertical. So they wanna make a door and they make it this way, which they're kind of just laying down flat, right? Remember that vertical lines stay vertical. So some people understand that vertical lines stay vertical, but then they might put a doorway that looks like that. Well, this is about halfway on that wall. If the door only came up halfway, not very many people would be able to fit through it. So make sure you're kind of checking what the height would be on something. A door might be a foot down from the ceiling, right? And then you could always extend that back if you wanted to turn. So just make sure that you're keeping vertical lines vertical, that you're not just guessing where the vanishing point is. The other thing I see a lot of times is people will do this for their floor. They'll go straight down. Those lines have to go to the vanishing point. Otherwise, it's just gonna look like it's falling off a cliff. It's gonna be coming straight down. So make sure that they are going back to the vanishing point and changing that angle as you go. All right, but one point perspective is fun to experiment with and to try all the different things that it will allow you to draw correctly and then expand on that. Don't just keep it as a, you know, like I said before, a robot drawing. You want to expand on it and make it, make it your own and make it um, with your own artistic flair. Just get the rules behind it, all right?